Hello and welcome to yet another video. Today we have a huge care package from a viewer. So you can see these two massive boards. These are both X570 uh, Oros Masters from Gigabyte. These are different revision numbers. This is 1.0 and this is 1.2 on the left. And this viewer actually sent in not only these two boards, but he sent in in total, I think, about 10 main boards. I'm going to include a picture right here of the box that I received. And the most important for, uh, thing for him was to get one of these two boards fixed. So he requested, if possible, to fix the 1.2 version. So this is this one. And I have no idea what is wrong with those main boards, with all of them that he sent me. I can see that there might have been some work done here already, I think around the BIOS maybe. But we're going to try out to uh, for him what is wrong with this board and we're going to try to fix this. And we're going to start with the 1.2 revision board and going to have a look at it, how it behaves and what it does. I have no information at all on these boards, but let's try to find that out together what is wrong with this one. So I'm going to be taking this one to the side for, uh, for the first. Let's now see what our passive power consumption is. So this is high. Oh wow. This is very high. This doesn't look promising. That is 370 milliamps of power consumption. So um, I would uh, instantly go into the SIO area, which is under this big heatsink, um, because 3 VSB seems to be shorted, or maybe even 5 VSB seems to be shorted. So let's take some measurements and see about that. Let's get my multimeter. So checking 5 VSB, the fourth pin from the top, we have high resistance. So that is not a problem. So next thing I would go on is the 3 VSB and the 3 VA that is responsible for the SIO. So let's take this heatsink off and see at the SIO. This took an eternity to take off. And we're still not at our, at our, at our SIO. So our SIO is behind this big heatsink which also is responsible for the PCH. So let's take this off as well. Always remember, never loosen the screw fully on the PCH because there's a lot of pressure applied with these screws. So start to undoing them in a start pattern. And once they are a little bit undone, you can then screw them out fully. The best thing is to also hold it from the other side with your hand as I do here. And this also has a connector that is just a pullout. So someone has been here already because as you can see, there's no thermal paste anymore or nothing applied to the PCH, which is, which is a big problem. Shipping something with the cooler on, but no heat, um, no compound is very bad. That can crack the crystal. And that could also be a problem that we have on here. So first thing I want to do is go around the SIO and check for uh, low resistance. And this seems to be fine. So I'm probing uh, big capacitors around the SIO. But all of these seem to be fine. Let's go on 3.3 volt. That is also fine. So. The next big thing would be to check the coil for the PCH and I don't really know which one of these is responsible for the PCH but there should be one that has like some kind of low resistance and this has very low resistance. This has 5 ohms. This might be a dead PCH actually. Um, let's go under the microscope and let's uh, test the capacitors on the PCH itself. And now we can see the PCH and this kind of looks like a burn mark to be honest on here. It might be, no, it might be just dirt. Okay, let's go at these capacitors right here and see for their resistance. 
This has good resistance. This has 400 ohms. This also has 400 ohms. Also 400 ohms. Also 400. This is 81. 81 is also good, I think. So these capacitors all looks decent from trying to check these capacitors. I'm going to do some more because there seems to be different readings. And this one is weird. This one has five ohms. And that is not a good sign. This, all, this one also. So I will have to get the board view. And I will have to find what kind of voltages are supplied to the PCH. And then we're going to check the, those in depth to see if this PCH is dead or not. So looking at the board view now, this coil where we saw low resistance is the one volt phase, a uh, one volt SOC phase. So what else do we have here? We have VCCIO in. So this is responsible for creating the phase that is coming out here. So this should have 12 volts on it. And this one also is supposed to have 12 volts on it. And this one, phase two, PM cold 012. So I don't know what this coil is supposed to have on it. And let's see one more thing. Let's see what comes out of this one. There comes uh, 1.8 volts comes out of that one. It is also connected. So we can also check that one but I think we have a dead PCH because this one and this phase has one one volt. Um, this one volt phase has very low resistance, but let's check that together once more. So let's go onto this thing here and check for its resistance to ground. And this has 1.8 kilo ohms. And this is almost a kilo ohm, so that is that is fine. And we know that this coil here has very low resistance. And what we are going to ne do next is we're going to take the power supply and we're going to be supplying one volt to it and going to be looking at the power consumption and we're going to see if we have a hotspot uh, anywhere on the the SIO, uh, the PCH, to find out if it's dead or not. So we, n we now have the thermal camera set up. We're going to be hovering around the PCH. And what we also have, we have ground clamp here. We have one volt on this clamp right here. And you can see the power supply. And let's supply one volt to that face and see how much it takes. Yep, <laughs> this takes a lot of current. So this takes about, as you can see, 1.5 amps. That might be fine, but I don't think it is fine, to be honest. Like. The spot at my probes is getting hot, but there's nothing more connected to this than the PCH. But I don't see a specific hotspot anywhere, and the power consumption also dropped. Very interesting. We might have to check the board view once more. And it seems to be heating up. We have the hotspot somewhere at the top of the PCH, but that might just be reflections. So this is very weird. We have 1.77 amps of draw, but I can't see single like proper hotspot on it. These are mostly just reflections of the PCH. Problems we can't supply any more voltage to it because this is a one volt rail. Let's go once more into our board view. 
and our in our board view we can see that this phase there's two capacitors here that are connected to it. We have all these dots of the PCH and we have a little bit more what we have here, a 2K resistor, so that isn't a problem, a 478 ohm resistor. And there's another 10K resistor, so these cannot be the problem because these are big resistors. We have we have something at the top right there. We're going to have a look at that, what that is. That might just be a test point. And we have quite some stuff on the back of the PCH. So we might want to have a look at that as well. So we have a test point at the very top for PCH IO. And if I'm not mistaken, the this is the very low ohms that we have. So it's going to be this test point right here. And this has about like five ohms. And my probes have very high resistance to themselves and this is ground. So I think our PCH is that. What we can very quickly do is uh, we can get the other board and compare it to that. So this is the revision 1.2 board that we have low resistance on the PCH. So let's take this board now and we're instantly going to be checking the resistance on it on the PCH via these top uh, top points. So let's get the multimeter in here. And let's test this point here. And this has low resistance as well. So this might be fine then. These this might be the power consumption that we need uh, the resistance that we need. Either that or we are very unlucky and have twice a dead PCH. That is very interesting. Let's continue on on the other one because we already have taken the heat sink off of the other one. So now I would have a look at the back side if there's anything damaged there. So there's two big tantalum caps right here. And this lower one should have the PCH resistance that we saw before. Yeah, this this is the low resistance that we see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to going to be supplying voltage into here, and I'm going to see if if anything on this side heats up. So we have still the power consumption of about 1.6 amps, 1.7 amps, but nothing getting hot. Like we have a small hot spot in the very center where the PCH is. So. I gotta say, this might be fine, but the big problem is that we had a uh, high power consumption when turning on the 5 VSB, which is a big problem because that is not supposed to be like that. And I can see physical damage, I think. Um, I want to show you that. So we're going to be looking at the bottom side of this. Let's switch the microscope. And if we look here, we have physical damage around this area. But I don't think that this has anything important to do. Like this looks like this connects to USB header or something like that on the bottom side. But we're going to have a look on the board view what this says. So on our board view, we have these components. And these seem to be connecting right here which is a USB, is this a USB header front U32? Interesting, yeah, this looks like a USB header and this is going, I think, directly to the PCH. Yeah, this goes out directly to the PCH. So this might even be the reason why it is broken. So there might have been something shorting out here because all of these go to the uh, go to the SIO, uh, to the PCH on the other side, and this might have had the problems that we have with the input-output voltage. So these might have caused our problem. Um, all of these just go to the PCH, go through here, go through that resistor. I think that's a resistor. 
not too sure this might be some sort of multiplexer or anything like that um, but it all goes to the PCH and this area looks heavily damaged so let's have a look again together under the microscope so none of this looks like it would actually damage anything there's a little bit which looks like yeah but that is just dirt so we have no connection between these like there's nothing shorting out against each other um, and I don't think this is going to be our problem area for why this board isn't starting. The big question now is why we have such a big uh, passive power consumption. Um, what we're going to do to isolate our problem, we are going to be isolating this one volt rail right here that has the low resistance. We're going to be uh, lifting this coil up from one side and then we're going to check the resistance again and we might want to, to do it in a way where we supply the one volt to here and then also the uh, attach the ATX power supply and then see how this board will behave. So let's try that first. So as you can see we have now lifted this coil. Let's go to our overhead view again and now let's see for our resistance. So the resistance is very low on its on this side. Let's get the multimeter somewhere where it doesn't reflect. So the PCH side is basically zero. We could see 3.5 ohms and my probes have very high resistance to themselves. Like they they self have quite some resistance. And if we s check the input side now we have very high resistance. So this probably is a dead PCH, but we can confirm that if we now get our power supply um, hooked up again, um, we have our power supply. We need to turn it to 12 volts now. And let's attach our VSB again. So let's attach our 12 volts again and let's see if we have now lower power consumption. We still have high power consumption. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So that that might not have been our problem. There might be something else shorted. Um, let's see for the three VSB. Let's find a spot on the board view for the three VSB and then apply some voltage to that or see uh, what kind of power consumption we will have on that. So I'm kind of struggling right now to find the th three VSB, but I want to do something else quickly before we do that. So the only thing that can have that high of a power consumption right now should only be the five VSB. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be, be applying 5 VSB. And we're going to see how much power consumption this will have. And this has about 800 milliamps, which is quite high. I would expect something to get hot with 800 milliamps. So to be able to find out what actually takes all of those amps, I will have to remove all of the heat sinks. So taking off the M2 heat sinks and taking off the big heat sinks around the VRM. So let me do that and then we're going to find out why we have that high of a pa passive power consumption. I gotta say it takes a long time to disassemble these. There's so much plastic, so many screws on here. I don't know how people who do GPU repairs all the time do that. but. I've now removed everything but the uh, heatsink for the VRM because the VRM I don't think is going to be a problem regarding 5 VSB. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be applying 5 VSB again via the power supply and I'm going to be going around the board with my uh, with my thermal camera and I'm going to be looking around if I can see where our problem is that we have that high of a power consumption on 5 VSB. So I think I've found our corporate. 
which is this chip right here as you can see this thing gets quite hot it has like 65 66 degrees right now this is way too hot for hot for 5 vsb so uh this looks like a small sio to be honest this is an ite chip and i don't know how how mandatory this is there's two different like um eproms next to it that are both programmed i think so let's go on to our board view and see what this thing is responsible for so on our board view this is marked ecu and we have a vcch here and this seems to be for monitoring power coming into here and this thing seems to be shorted like i can't really tell you what this thing is for fan pwm so for some fan stuff fan zero v bat is coming to your own here really not to show what this is responsible for ec gpio um but what we're going to do is we're going to go onto its power supply directly let's see which one ita v cch and let's measure that resistance there so let's see let's get a good ground here and let's go on to this capacitor i think so this is not i think oh vcch I'm trying to go around some of these capacitors to see what here might be its power supply. So I've now found something that looks like it, sh it shouldn't be this low of a resistance. As you can see, we have like 25 ohms on here. And I don't think that that is right for this small chip. We can check that. So we have 25 ohms here. Let's go onto the other board that we have and check that resistance on that board to come to be able to compare it to. So let's see on this board. Let's get a good ground here. And it was on this capacitor right there. And as you can see, we have way higher ohms. We have 440 ohms here. So I think it is this chip, but on the other board. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove that chip from there and we're going to see how our 5 VSB will change then. I will have to, um, I probably will have to protect at least this PCIe slot, probably these PCIe slots as well with some tape. For that we're also going to take out the battery and I will be taking off the chip and then we will see each other again. So as we can see, the chip was removed cl cleanly. None of the surrounding areas have flown. This is just flux that you can see on here. So now let's see for our power consumption again. So let's attach our ground. And now let's see our 5 VSB. And we now have 400 milliamps. This looks a lot better. I'm going, I don't think there's anything going to be shorted anymore. I'm still going to be going around the board once more. And I will see if I can find anything that is getting hot. So I don't think I can see anything getting hot anymore. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to let this cool down because this area is still quite hot. And then we're going to be attaching our 12, um, oh, 24 pin adapter again. And we're going to see for the power consumption how this board reacts. And then we also will monitor the PCH voltage, how that uh, is looking like. So now the area is cooled down. And let's now for the first time attach again our uh, 12 volts or 24 pin. And this looks like way better power consumption now. This still looks a little bit high, to be honest. Like uh, 120 milliamps with no LEDs anywhere on. But I want to see if we have something on the power button. So let's do that. 
So we have uh, nothing on the power button, there, but there's also no CPU installed. So we have the 2200G on here, and now we have a LED here, and we have reaction to the power button. That is something, that is nice. That is something new that we hadn't had before. And I think one of the things that we're now missing is connecting the PCH onto here. So let's do that. So I've now attached the PCH uh, supply again that has low resistance. Let's see if we have any change now. Okay, this looks still very nice. So I don't think that is a problem. Let's see now. Okay, we have a reaction to the power button. The PCH is getting warm. But I think that might be okay. How much the piece? Uh, no, I don't think. I don't think that is okay. I think the PCH is actually dead. Because that's getting very, very hot very quickly. Um, the big problem right now is uh, we don't have this chip on here. Which might be responsible for starting up. So we ne might need to get the chip from the other one. Put it onto here and see if that has any difference. We had way higher power consumption already because of uh, the PCH being attached to here. What I want to do is I want to get this off again. I want to try out one more thing. So what we are going to do now is we have the, um, the 24 pin now attached via our uh, server power supply. That and you can see the its power consumption right here. And we're now going to use one volt of the uh, of our power uh, lap bench power supply to supply it to the PCH, and then we're going to see how different this board will react in order when we have one volt from the power supply onto here, because we have. 5 amps of power consumption on here and this is way too much pretty sure we have a dead PCH on here but to just be able to confirm that I would want to actually solder this chip in so take the chip from the other from the other board solder it into here and then try this again but I think this PCH is sadly dead. So right now the new chip is on. This took me quite some while because I had, it's quite difficult to put on because we have so much uh, next to it. So there's one PCIe slot there. There's another PCIe slot there. Uh, we have another PCIe slot there. And the thing is that um, it got put on a little bit crooked, as you can see. It uh, has a little bit of an offset. And I made sure I went over on every single pin and uh, checked that that is soldered. So I went over the soldering iron with every single pin. So what I would have needed to do is to push on this side so that this moves down a little bit and this one moves to the right a little bit. but. And this should be fine. Uh, I've checked for no knocked off components around it while I was uh, using the hot air. And the PCIe slots also didn't suffer. As you can see, they're still good. There's no melted plastic or anything here. We still have smooth edges. Uh, not smooth edges, but sharp edges. And yeah, um, the area is mostly cleaned up. And now comes the big moment. Um, I will let this cool off a little bit longer and then we will be connecting this to power supply again and we're going to see if we now have any boot sequence going on and if not it's probably the PCH that is dead. We now have 240 milliamps just as we had before so this chip is not shorted and now we need to connect our one volt again to the PCH in order for it to get the power that it needs. But before doing that, I would want to now press the power button and see if we have any change by that. And we actually do have change. Look at that. It actually went to DRAM. Very interesting. 
let's try to turn this off and this is very interesting so we have different uh, than we had before and without connecting the power supply to the pch right there so let's see if we can actually get a picture or anything out of this um without needing uh this voltage on the uh, sio i would expect this seems like an input output thing and going into windows that will probably crash if we're trying to boot into there without this voltage and there is no there's actually no vga on this so there's no way to connect a there's no way to connect an apu onto here that is very strange that is something that very rarely occurs so what we're going to do is we're going to prop this up a little bit and let's use our test gpu then put this into here and now let's connect ram onto here so now let's see i'm very very interested how this is now going to go there's no nothing on the pch but we're not going to run for long so where you can look you can look at these postcodes and at these leds we have cpu dram vga boot and let's now see how this will react i will have my finger on the pch to monitor how f uh, how hot it is getting in order to shut everything down if it's get if it gets too hot and for first we're not going to be uh, supplying the one volt that is needed there so let's turn this on now And now we have postcodes running. This is DRAM. Yeah, let's see, can we get further than this? So we're currently stuck on DRAM. So this could have multiple uh, reasons. One of the reasons is that the PCH isn't running. This could be one of the reasons why this isn't working. We might want to connect into a different, um, into a different DRAM uh, slot as well, just to be sure. But we're going to the same postcode every time. We're all, all, all the time going to 4D. So they are changing. But okay, let's turn this off when it's to 4D. Let's turn this off again. So let's connect this into a different slot. One more thing that I want to look, have a look at. There are two flip switches. And they seem to be BIOS switches. Uh, I think that we can uh, leave them as they are. Let's now try it again with in a different slot. If we can get any further than 4D or whatever we had. Okay, we are still, we are again stuck on 4D. Um, the thing is the PCH has nothing on it as, at all. So there's no heat here like nothing i can't feel any warmth so i think this issue sh will be related that our pch isn't running but for once i want also to see if we're going to have a difference if we go into there i want uh, to once try all of the ram slots just to be sure and we're ending on the same spot again so let's turn this off once more and we're going to be trying in the one slot that we haven't tried yet so we still get to the same point one more thing that i want to try right now oh 54 huh it's a little bit different now okay it rebooted by itself Let's see if it does anything different now. Very, very interesting. It behaves a little bit different now. Let's see if we go to 4D. So there's no warmth at all on the PCH. It's like basically not being used at all. But the postcode seem a little bit different in this slot. Let's try to turn this off. And let's flip one of these switches. And see yeah, and this now we have a different BIOS selected. Let's uh while this is trying to 
post. I want to see if this one volt is actually running on here. So let's go on to here and there. Three volts, huh? 3.2 volts, interesting. Why is that so much? Huh, very, very interesting. Why is that 3.3 volts? Thought it's supposed to be one volt. So I don't know what the second switch does. So I don't think we will get past this post uh, this DRAM issue before we not take care of the PCH so it's very interesting that there's three volts on on there and not, not one volt like I would expect there to be. So let's try this with one volt attached to it, uh, which is this probe right here. And um, I will get the power consumption for you. So I'm very scared to do this, but let's try this. and see if we can get further now. Power consumption is actually not too bad with 2.3 volts. Let's cycle this board manually. Turn it off and let's turn it on with the PCH from the beginning enabled. And now the PCH is getting, getting very hot, 5 amps. Now it's actually going to start to burn my finger. Uh, but I want to see if we get any further than DRAM. Oh, okay. I cannot hold this anymore. Um, Interesting. So we didn't have the change that I would have expected. Um, I'm going to be trying a lot off screen now. I'm going to be uh, using a different CPU in here. And I will be changing RAM out. And I want to see if there's any change in that. And I will get you back as soon as I have gotten any further with this. And I w might want to try to connect the actual power supply again for the PCH. And see if that can make a difference. <laughs> but for now, I will do some variations of different, uh, different CPUs connected with different uh, RAM. And this might also be a BIOS issue, but I don't think the BIOS has been altered on this board. I might want to try to alter it. And yeah, as soon as I, I will get something, I will um, get you back onto here. So I have now tried different CPUs. I have tried different positions for the DRAM. I have tried different sp different. Uh, a different BIOS using the QFlash uh, functionality. And I've tried um, putting one volt into here, into the PCH, and all of that didn't work. What I now want to do is actually connect back up the PCH face onto here and seeing if that will help it. But for that, I will need to get the cooler back onto there because it's getting very, very hot already. So we will apply the cooler onto there and I will solder this coil back onto there. And we're going to see if that will then have a difference on, on this board and if we then can get DRAM detected. I've also tried to use my... Um, data analyzer, so the data li line analyzer for the for DDR, but n uh, all of the data lines seem to be intact and none of the LEDs were missing. So I got to be honest, I'm kind of scared of now turning it on. We have now everything that we need. We have the PCH attached to here again the, I mean, the power supply. We have the DDR, we have everything here. Let's get the graphics card also in here. And let's see if this now is going to blow up or not. Uh, that wasn't the right one. 
<laughs> let's try this again. We're going to be looking at here and let's turn this on. And let's see. And we still seem to have the same issue. Oh, no, we're booting. Is this for real? Yeah, are we post screen? Post screen question mark. We have so many postcodes running right now. We have, oh, and there is the post screen. I cannot believe it, it's actually on. It actually turned on. I cannot believe this. And there's our bio screen. I am very happy for this. So the PCH does not seem to be dead. It's supposed to have that low of, of resistance. That is very interesting. I guess this is this is special to X570. I haven't worked a lot with X570. But I'm very happy, very, very happy now to see this. Um, I'm going to do the usual, which is to get my 2600X in here, get a big GPU into the first slot, get all of the RAM populated, and then get to testing this thing. So as you can see, we're currently running and we are in Windows through an M.2. We have our graphics card with 16x 3.0. I think this is the max that this graphics card can support. And yeah, what can I say? I cannot believe that this board is working now, that we actually had this one chip that was shorted. There's that thing that which looked like a SIO, the small version of it. That this was all that was dragging down the 5 VSB line. And luckily we had a second board where we could pull our one off of that actually worked. And as you can see it is running. I'm very happy with this. I have four DIMMs attached to here. I have the 2600X, I have the GPU in here, I have an M.2, I have some USB devices connected. Um, there is also Wi-Fi, I think. I'm going to check for that later, but that isn't a priority. I will be fixing the damage that we saw uh, at the backside of this board, like of the 3.0 uh, header connector. I'm going to be just taking stuff off of the other board that we had. And with that, I will... I will be able to fix that one, but that this is just very small soldering work, like replacing some capacitors, uh, um, and then there's like one or two lines that need to be uh, drawn with some copper wire because they were broken, but nothing big. This, that this post, this works, and this withstands stress test, this is the most important thing for me. I hope you learned something. I'm le uh, Let's see how we will cut this video because I have like, around two hours of raw footage there's going to be a lot to look at but i hope you enjoyed this repair thank you very much for watching i hope you learned something this was mainboard medic thank you very much and goodbye